So even though the force the vote era and effort is over, you know, I still believe that it's a good idea to get a floor vote on Medicare for all. I know that some folks disagree with that strategy and that's fine. But I want to see like a concerted effort by progressive Democrats in Congress to continue pushing when it comes to Medicare for all. I don't want them to just basically like accept defeat and, you know, accept that we're not going to get Medicare for all during the Biden era. So we might as well not even fight. I want them to continue to advance the goal of fighting for Medicare for all. And so what I want from them is a signal that they do actually have a plan. And in an interview with the American Prospect, the newest members of the squad, Marie Newman specifically, she did assure us that she does have a plan. And she was also asked about uh, Force the Vote. And she said something that was really, really interesting. And I feel a little bit reassured based on what she says. But then immediately we'll go to something that Mondaire Jones says. And I don't like what he says, and I don't feel reassured based on what he says. But first, Marie Newman was asked, there's this debate now about where to go strategy-wise. The force the vote calls come to mind in particular. Where do you think we go strategy-wise as progressives? She responded by saying, I like strategies that work. I know there's noise out there, and I don't understand that strategy. It's articulated by folks who have never spent a day in Congress. I love the spirit and the passion. I'm with them on spirit and passion and desire for that legislation. It's not like we're sitting on our hands. We do have a plan to bring a Medicare for All bill to the floor. We're working on it. We're not going to let our cards be seen yet. But are we going to work really hard on Medicare for All? 100%. Are we going to get it to the floor? 100%. We have to bring Medicare for All to the floor in a responsible and powerful way that has good strategy. That's the one I'm backing. I'm not backing a super risky throw the dice crapshoot model. So I like most of what she's saying, although I reject the implication that, you know, your input is invalid if you haven't been in Congress. I mean, she was just sworn in. Uh, I, I think that strategic advice is important from outsiders because we don't have like that insider bias. I mean, we have the outsider bias, but I think that our input should still be valuable. Uh, so I, I reject that. But but putting that aside, when it comes to a floor vote on Medicare for all, she says we're 100 percent going to get it to the floor. That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear, oh, well, you know what? It's not It's not the time. It's not going to come up currently. We need to continuously push to advance Medicare for all. And to hear her say that, to signal to us that there's a sign of life for at least some members of the squad and they're going to keep fighting for this, that's really important. Because look, I will admit that it's it's a, it's a difficult time to be a progressive member of Congress because... There are so many crises that our country faces. I don't know where to begin. Like for me, if I were a member of Congress and I just got elected, I wouldn't know where to start. There's there's too many issues to fix. But what I do want to know is that Medicare for All is an issue that is at the forefront of their priorities. And this assures to me, at least, that uh, it is. Now we go to the part where Mardar Jones is going to say something that kind of contradicts what Mary Newman says. Um, I'm just going to read it to you. I'll tell you why I have an issue with it. So he claims that the Democratic Party has, in fact, shifted to the left overall, which I actually disagree with. Uh, but then he was asked about Medicare for all. Uh, he was asked one place where that leftward drift doesn't seem um, or it seems less obvious is the healthcare question. There's a block that backs Medicare for all. Joe Biden has supported the public option and House leadership has focused just on expanding the ACA. How do you think progressives should intervene here? He responded by saying, imagine debating the merits of a public option versus Medicare for all when there is a 6-3 conservative majority on the Supreme Court that will strike down the Affordable Care Act. So I push back on the idea that that's going to be the nature of the fight. So um, this ain't it. This is a really, really bad take, and I hope that more members of the squad don't agree with this. I hope that they actually unequivocally reject this line of thinking, because if you're waiting to fight for Medicare for All until the conditions are right, so that way it's not going to be attacked, well, you're never, ever going to find the time to get Medicare for All. It's never going to be the right time, because we live in a capitalist system. So even if there was an 8-1 liberal majority on the Supreme Court, if you got it passed, guess what? capitalist forces will attack that system. Once we actually get Medicare for all passed, it is going to be a constant battle forever that will never ever end to keep the progress that we've made 
in every single country that has either single payer or a national healthcare system, there's always the threat of privatization. That's always going to be the case. We're going to constantly have to fight to expand benefits, to fight, you know, the uh, forces of the private health insurance industry if they're not fully abolished with whatever, you know, uh, conception of Medicare for all passes, if that's the case. It's just, this is a cop-out to me, and I don't like it, and Mondaire Jones needs to reevaluate like what you fight for because if you are waiting to pass something at the safest moment you're not going to get anything accomplished so to say oh well we can't pass medicare for all when there's a 6-3 conservative majority on the supreme court well what can we get done they can basically strike down anything i mean there are things that lawmakers can do to protect their legislation from a constitutional challenge. And there will be constitutional challenge uh, challenges that pop up by conservative uh, organizations and whatnot. But I mean, like, this is the nature of politics. You're not going to find yourself in the perfect situation where you pass something and it stands as it is. We just need to get Medicare for all because once people have it, it'll be more difficult to take it away from them, right? And you don't necessarily know for a fact that it will face a challenge. I think it's very likely. But this was the case even if Bernie Sanders were to become president. We all anticipated Medicare for All to be held up to the highest scrutiny imaginable. But you don't not fight for it willingly. So yes, uh, I absolutely disagree with Mondaire Jones that the nature of the fight will be Medicare for All versus a public option versus expanding the Affordable Care Act. And... This is not to say that Munder Jones is a sellout and doesn't support Medicare for All. I believe that he does support Medicare for All. This is what he ran on. Um, and, and so far, he hasn't given me any indication that he's backing away from that. But I think that when it comes to strategy, he has a lot to learn. Because this tells me that he either doesn't understand capitalism or has a flawed strategy uh, of change. So I hope that, you know... This thinking doesn't rub off on other members of the squad, but I, I am a lot more confident in AOC, in Cori Bush, in Marie Newman now that she's reassured us. And I, I just wanted to know that this issue isn't going to get put on the sidelines, that they're going to continue to fight. Uh, because look, you've got to strike while the iron is hot. During a pandemic, we need health care more than ever. 15 million Americans lost their employer-based health insurance in 2020. So if we don't continue to push the envelope push this issue, that's a failure on us. So I want to know that our allies in Congress have our backs and I want them to know that we have their backs. And when push comes to shove, when they need us to make phone calls, when they push a floor vote on Medicare for all, coordinate with us, coordinate with left media. We will help you. We will assist you because we want the same thing you want. We want Medicare for all because it is absolutely outrageous that people in this country continue to die and even during a pandemic, the same folks who never supported Medicare for All aren't even considering reevaluating their positions. So, um, you know, this is interesting. I'll link you to the full interview. They also had Cory Bush on here as well and Jamal Bowman. But um, yeah, lots of really interesting questions asked by the American Prospect. Uh, hopefully you will check out the full interviews with the newest members of the squad.